Welcome to the last video of the series. We will be talking about dashboards within NetXMS. And dashboards are a tool which can be used for a lot of different purposes. And there really is pretty much unlimited potential for dashboards, and your creativity and imagination is really the limit here. So we will of course not cover all of the possible uses of the dashboards, because you can do potentially anything with the dashboards depending on your actual goal and the target and what you want to achieve with the dashboard. But I would like you at least to show you how they work and what they can be used for, and then you can go ahead and figure out your own uses. So let's create a new dashboard here. And dashboards, when you open them, are empty. Pretty much the most important thing you need to learn is that they are a grid. If you just imagine them like a table, so they have a certain number of rows and a certain number of columns. And then you can organize your different dashboard elements into the table and they can span multiple rows or multiple columns, etc. So if that doesn't make much sense, let's just look at it and hopefully it makes more sense as we configure it. So the dashboard can have multiple elements. In my example here, I will choose the dashboard to have two columns and make the columns equal width. And let's just hit apply here. And I will actually be comparing on this particular dashboard two routers which are routing one part of our network here. So first of all I will do a couple of labels here to label the actual data that I will be displaying. Then I will actually add two line charts. And if I do apply now and press OK and refresh the dashboard, you will see that, as we mentioned, it's organized in a table-like structure, in a table-like manner where I actually specified here that the table should have two columns, so you can see it has two columns, and they should be equal width, and then I have four elements. So the elements simply take place in the dashboard starting from the top left. So this is element 1, element 2, element 3, and 4, and this is how they are spaced. You can see that the labels are taking quite a bit of space, which is probably not what we want, so we simply go into the label properties, go to layout and disable grab excessive space for both of the labels. And that will actually, again if I click OK and refresh, that will make the labels simply take as much space as there is text in them, and you can see that the other graphs readjust. And then I will add two more labels and actually two more graphs or line charts as well. Alright, so if you refresh this, again we need to adjust the labels to not take excessive space, so we can en enter the edit mode here and just edit this particular label, uncheck this, uncheck this, and it is much better now. So I will fast forward a little bit while, while I work on this dashboard and you can watch what I'm doing. So I will be just adjusting some titles and adding some data sources to the graphs. So I would like to slow down here for a second and show you how to adjust because you can see the graph actually has the description here on the right which is taking quite a bit of space. So you can adjust that very easily by going to the chart menu and selecting the position of the legend, so we will do at the bottom, and we will actually do a show extended legend here which will show us our average maximum and minimum values here. So let's get back to editing. So what you can see here right now is we are almost finished. What I'm gonna do is just switch these particular line charts into logarithmic scale to be able to easily see the packets per second and the bits per second on the same graph. This is because the bits 
per second are really high numbers like 10 megabits which is 10 million bits and the packets per second are actually quite low like you can see a thousand packets per second here so switching the graphs into logarithmic scale let, lets me correlate between how many packets per second and bits per second there are on an interface so if there is a lot of packets per second but the bit rate is low I would see that there is a lot of actual small packets going through the interface whereas if the bit rate is quite high and the packets are quite low it's big packets traversing the interface so let me just exit the edit mode and save the dashboard here and you can see that this dashboard for example could be our two edge routers in our infrastructure or any two very important points in the infrastructure and you could put this up on a big screen in your data center or at your office just to spot problems right away. You could configure these particular graphs to be for example 1 hour or 10 minutes or even 24 hours if you want to see the traffic for the previous 24 hours etc. So we can see this was a really fast I actually set, it, set this up in about 5 minutes in real time so this was a really fast setup of a fairly useful dashboard. So on this simple dashboard I would like to show you a few more things. So if we go into the big dashboard properties just to see all of the elements, if I wanted to add a label now which would actually span both of the columns, I can add it up here, move it all the way up to top and actually again disable the grab vertical space but I could give it the horizontal span of two rows. So in this particular example, if you then refresh, you can see it actually spams both rows. And here we could actually say that this table is CPU statistics. So let's look at a bit more complicated dashboard now. So this would be just an example of how you could set up various elements on the dashboard and all the different information that it could show you. So for example here is a status indicator which indicates the status of a whole box and right under it for example because box 2 has a problem right now you could see the actual list of problems. So in this box for example the power is currently out so it's currently running on batteries and then some environmental data from each box like the power use over the last week and the temperature over the last week and then you can actually see the map of the devices inside of this box and the actual world map where these boxes are located because these are actually outdoor boxes which have a few devices in them so as you can see you can kinda just go crazy and create whatever setup on the dashboard that you want, need and whatever objective you want to achieve with the visual visualization. So for this dashboard you can see it's actually configured into four columns of course the columns are of equal width and then the status indicators of course they have grab excessive vertical space off so they only grab as much space as they need but for the alarm viewer actually if you enable grab excessive vertical space it will go all the way down because it's a scrolling list which could potentially vertically scroll a lot if there is many events in it but disabling this will actually size it not automatically size it therefore you need to give it a hate hint of how it actually should size itself so you can see that here then we have the labels and then we have some light charts same deal actually I disabled grab excessive vertical space on them but this is just because when you actually have this enabled all the elements try to balance themselves and actually have equal vertical sizing equal heights of course this only applies for all of the elements that actually have this setting enabled if you disable this setting and give it the height hint it will size itself according to the hint. If you leave the hint at minus one, it will only take as much space as it, as it really needs. So the problem was for me that the graphs were a bit too high for me. I didn't like them being so high, so I manually told them to be smaller vertically. And then you can see uh, two network maps here and the actual geo map, so the actual world global map, which has been positioned to a particular set of coordinates with a certain zoom level. And if you go into the dashboard elements and press the add button you can see a whole list of other dashboard elements which I did not cover here. But you can imagine 
how you could set up all kinds of different dashboards that could be useful. So before we finish I want to show you a few dashboards which I actually use. So this one is actually I have a set of Raspberry Pis which are doing certain workloads and you can see I have the per core CPU usage and the combined average CPU load and again the same deal with the logarithmic graph of bits per second and packets per second. You can also have a dashboard like this. This is two particular sites which have three links, wireless links between the sites and you can actually see here that it's showing me a status of the wireless links, the router CPU usage again for each core and the combined average load. So I can actually see the router status and if all three wireless links between these sites are actually on or off. And you can see here statistics about one of those actual wireless links that we saw on this dashboard. So you can see the combined stacked traffic on the link. So this graph is upload plus download. These are separate upload and download graphs to compare some signal statistics and then the actual CPU and memory usage of the access point and the client since this is a point-to-point -point wireless link and etc 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 as I said before you could create really dashboards for any particular purpose that you can come up with. Thanks for watching the basic series hopefully I'll see you in the advanced series as well.